Alright, this is just going to be a quick little showcase of a few games running in Linux that I think is pretty cool. Two of them are in Steam, of course, uh, as that is the easiest and most stable way of running games in Linux. And the other one is in the Heroic Game Launcher. And we had to do some tweaking to get working um, to my liking, but it is working great. I'm going to show you my hardware specifications. We're running Pop OS 20.04 LTS. The only thing that I have modified on this system is installing the traditional GNOME shell because I'm not a big fan of all of the customizations that Pop! OS makes to the, the traditional layout. They uh, modify it quite a bit thematically. So we're just using standard GNOME here. 16 gigs of RAM, i5 11400H, 6 core 12 thread CPU, and a 3050 Ti. It's our graphics card with 4 gigs of VRAM and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Of course, using the X11 windowing system, and like I said, Pop OS 20.04 LTS. So the first and most impressive thing I'm really happy with, and I knew that this is something that you could do, but I was struggling to get it to work properly, was running Final Fantasy VII Remake in Linux. Uh, like I said, knew that it was possible. However, uh, the game. It's not like it's documented like on Proton TV or anything like that. So, just because I see a video of it working does not mean that when I install it, it's going to work. I had to just do it myself. So I installed the Heroic Games Launcher from the Pop Shop here. Uh, you can find it on GitHub also, and it'll give you a list of commands that you can input into the terminal if you want to install it. But I did it that way. It was super easy. Sign in to my Epic Game account, install Final Fantasy VII Remake, and if we look at our settings here... One really cool thing about the Heroic Game Launcher is not only can you install custom versions of Proton super easily through this wine manager here. It says it's in beta, but I'm sure it works great. I have not had a reason to because it's the only game that I have an interest in playing, and it runs amazingly using stock Proton <coughs> 7, the latest uh, stable release of Proton from Valve. But it is cool that this is a feature. Um, and if we look at our settings here, we can see that this allows us to use any version of Proton that we, we want to by default, Proton Experimental and 7.0, whatever we have installed through Steam. We have both of those enabled through Steam, so you can choose the latest stable version of Proton to test your games with, or any of those custom versions of Protons that show up in the line manager. And I've not had to configure anything else in the global settings. However, after I installed Final Fantasy VII Remake, my biggest concern was save data sync. I have like three or four hours in the game on Windows 11, and I didn't want to start over. It's a very story-heavy game. It's a lot of stuff to reach you through after you've already done it, especially if it's just been a few days. So I came over here, and I saw the Save Sync tab. I was like, oh, cool, I can just sync it. Uh, there's a download, an upload, a force download, a force upload, and an auto-sync save. I do not recommend turning this on. Uh, you can just force upload your save or upload it if you ever want to refresh that on the Epic game server side. Um, otherwise, I would just keep it local and just, like I said, don't don't auto sync because you could put yourself in a nasty situation, like I was, where I auto synced. So when I tried to download the saves that were on Epic Game Server that had all of my save data, um, it would only download the latest save, which had been from this, and uh, that was a save that didn't have my save basically. Um, so I had to troubleshoot this for about 45 minutes, but I figured it out, and I got it to work, and I got all of my save data fixed. Uh, and just to go ahead and show this off, too, I am running the game in DirectX 11, which you can add dash DX11 here to the game arguments, and the game performs much better in Windows and in Linux with the DirectX 11 API instead of the DirectX 12 API, so I would recommend setting that. Uh, we can also show our FPS here which I can confirm does work, and that's one way we can tell that the DirectX 11 mode is working also, because it shows the FPS, which it would not do with the DirectX 12 API, so that's good. Uh, on to how I fixed my saves. Basically, I had to install Legendary. I don't know if there's a way to do this through Heroic. I don't think that there is. Basically, you can install Legendary, you install pip, which is a Python package thing 
allows you to install this application and there's other uses for it but primarily all I needed it for was this and we basically run these commands after updating our pip and we install this neat little command line utility and I believe there's a graphical interface for it too as well these web toolkits and stuff you install those but I only installed this not because I would ever use it over the heroic game launcher which is just infinitely better and easier to install but because there's a command um, where you can download all saves from your Epic Games account that are stored on the Epic server. So you would basically just put in the command legendary space and then download saves. And of course you have to authorize your account first. Maybe I should have prefaced it with that. that. But basically you'll type in legendary space auth after you do all the steps above uh, on this GitHub page. And it will have you sign into your Epic Game account. You'll have to paste a string of characters that it'll show you after you, you sign in into the terminal and it will sign into your account. Uh, after that, then you can do legendary space download saves. And what it will do, for me it created a folder here, my home directory, my user folder in games. And it had a hidden folder, which you can show hidden files through whatever file explorer you have. Uh, the uh, process of which is different for every one, but for me it's just as simple as clicking on that and clicking show hidden files. It'll have a dot saves folder. Uh, and it had all of my epic game epic game save files that I ever had on my account. And it saved it to the dot saves folder. And it was mostly uh, strings of characters. I had to open up each folder to see what game some of these were for and thankfully the Final Fantasy save data said Final Fantasy 7 remake uh, dot whatever I can show you that here I basically just renamed this folder to epic backup saves and removed the period so that we could view the folder without having hidden files enabled uh, and I renamed the two folders that mattered to me so Sifu saves I have a backup of those in case I ever want to try installing that and then I renamed the folder that had all the Final Fantasy 7 remake saves as you can see it has all of these saves. We've got four folders worth of saves. And this is the one that is bad. I'm gonna delete that because I do not need it. That's the one that has only my new game save. But we have this from 325, 11.40.11 .11 here. This has my most recent saves. So basically, since uh, the upload, or not the upload, but the download save feature did not work through the heroic game launcher as intended, and it ended up just overriding the latest save uh, in the launcher to the one that didn't work, um, I had to install this, download all of my saves, and then manually copy them and paste them in the game's save directory in the line prefix folder, which I'll show in a second. Also, I just want to correct myself. I did not auto-sync my no-save game. I did not enable that until after trying to force download the saves in the first place so I don't know what was going on uh, it did not work at first so then I enabled the cloud sync and then I ended up saving the new game which is uh, what it would pull automatically when I try to force it after that so uh, I looked it up and I, it would seem other people have had this issue where the save data stuff just doesn't work so if that ever does happen I just recommend installing legendary and downloading your save data that way and just copying the files to your save directory so for me uh, coming here to the epic backup saves folder the dot saves folder from legendary I just copied and we can go to our homes folder games my heroic folder here and then we can see prefixes and Final Fantasy remake integrate we want to go to the prefixes folder because this is where the save data location is we click on this folder PFX Drive C, Users, Steam User, I don't know why it auto-named me that, but it did. Documents, My Games, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And this is this folder, capital EOS, is where our saved games are located. There's a folder here, and this is where we paste our saves. So, Legendary allowed me to download all my saves. I could choose which ones I wanted, and I just copy and paste them in this folder, and voila. We can go over here now. I'll, I'll go ahead and turn on this FPS counter just to show it working. 
I have our DirectX 11 argument, frame rate counter, and we're running with Proton 7.0. We can now launch Final Fantasy 7 Remake Integrate. It may look a little laggy because OBS screen capture does degrade performance, but I was running the game at pretty much a locked 60 with high settings, texture set to low, because uh, this game has a, a really great issue where the frame rate will drop if you're running at higher frame rates and you have high texture settings according to the, the PC Gaming Wiki. So these are my settings. We can just load in and um, there are all my saves, every single one of them. So we had mission successful and I'll just load in here. So like I said, this is probably not gonna look too great, but uh, this is a more intense area than where I'm actually at in the game. As you can see, our frame rate count is working. And here we go. Looks stuttery. It feels way more stuttery. That is only because of the screen capture. Keep that in mind. But here we go. It is working flawlessly. At least without OBS on. And if we really wanted to fix this while using OBS, what you can do... I'll just go ahead and show this because I have nothing better to do. Hopefully it doesn't crash the game. Go to options, graphic settings, and put this in windowed mode. Oh, this might actually work out pretty well. Um, that has smoothed it up quite a bit, but what I would typically do here is go to OBS, I would enable window capture properties and select the window and then turn off screen capture, which you're not going to be able to see very easily there. But that is how I, if you wanted to capture smoothly using OBS, with an NVIDIA GPU specifically, this is the best way in my opinion to do it. You have the least performance degradation, it doesn't make the game feel as stuttered. So yeah, it's pretty awesome, it's working amazingly. The game is working flawlessly, I've been like four hours in. I haven't played it extensively in Linux, but so far it would seem like my saves worked. Uh, four hours worth of progress into the game, loaded me in perfectly fine. Everything seems to be functioning great. And I've not seen too many articles, if any at all, that I can remember that show people having any problems running this game like so surely other people have done it also and it's just really great because this game costs seventy dollars and i really love it i like playing it and i want to beat it and i can't do that if my operating system doesn't run it uh, so there we go working flawlessly um and like i said what we can still do here let me turn my screen capture back on is when we have our updated, like say we make it 10 more hours, or have we ever reached a game breaking bug in Linux for some reason, making sure my preview's up, uh, we could just upload our save file to the Epic server, and if we ever reinstalled Windows, we could just sync it from that server. So, really cool, really great. This required the most amount of tinkering. It was definitely frustrating, but there we go close out of that the next thing that we're going to do is launch up steam we have two more games here that i want to showcase one just came out a month ago and the other one a week or two ago uh elden ring and tunic and basically with tunic uh after we go into our steam settings of course and enables steam play for all of the titles and select i just leave it default to proton experimental because i always force it per game to whatever version i need but you have to enable this, and then you'll click OK. I also enabled the shader precaching for Vulcan shaders, by the way. It's really smart to do that. And when you click OK, it'll restart Steam, and then you can install any Windows game that's not designed to run on Linux. And with Tunic, I just right-click Properties, Compatibility, and Force Proton 7.01. When I installed it, and as you can see here, it should launch up just fine, like it did earlier when I was playing it. Runs flawlessly. Really high frame rate, even when screen capturing. Uh, nowhere near stuttery. I think the stuttering when full screen, not full screen capturing, like desktop record mode in OBS is going, it only really makes games stutter that are super GPU intensive, and this is just not. It's a very beautiful game, runs flawlessly in Linux, and we can record our entire desktop and just have this running and it doesn't lag anything out. Uh, no issues with this. This has a platinum rating on ProtonDB, so it's really great. I'll like find an enemy and decimate him real quick. All 
All right, there we go. Tunic works beautifully. And I would love to do more gameplay videos in Linux showcasing some of these things, but this is just more a proof of uh, functionality right now. Uh, and secondly, Elden Ring, we will have to run this in Windows mode. I already tried full screen uh, recording earlier with this game, and it lagged it out pretty bad. The frame rate wasn't really any different, but the actual s s performance of the game was compromised. It was far more stuttery. Uh, so basically, the only thing that I've done to this game is forced Proton 7.01. And let me see if I can scroll up through all of my terminal commands. Um, here we go. These two commands right here, if we right click on our Elden Ring application in Steam, click on Browse Local Files, open the game folder, right click, open a terminal, we can basically run those two commands this one cp start underscore protected underscore game.exe start protected game.exe not back and after that cp ring.exe start underscore protected underscore game.exe exactly as they're typed here in this terminal run this one first and this one second it will completely disable the easy anti-cheat functionality in old ring and i had to do that for my game to launch it didn't matter which proton version i was using i tried experimental the beta branch of experimental and i tried seven None of them would work unless I did that. So, Proton 7.01 with those two commands run, and voila, we can launch Elden Ring, and it runs absolutely beautifully in Linux. None of the same slowdown or stuttery hitches that you get in the Windows version. It just feels like a... I mean, it still doesn't hit 60 FPS like I feel that it should on my hardware. Uh, both of my computers, matter of fact, struggle with this game to lock 60. It's just the way that it is. Um, didn't even mean to click on that. But, it works. So, we can do windowed mode. Uh, you know, we'll just do borderless mode. There we go. And once again, in OBS, window capture properties. Golden Ring. It's not showing anything right now. Okay, so we... There we go. We can just load into our game. Shouldn't be nearly as laggy since we're window capturing. There we go. Completely smooth. Matter of fact, hold on. I'm going to exit out of the game and open up Mango Hood. I, sh I could have done that for a... Uh, uh, tunic. I was not thinking about it. So... Text it out of this. Whoops. No. What's it doing? Exit game. Turn screen capture back on. And, uh... Let's go to Mango HUD's GitHub just so I can be sure that I'm doing this properly. Pretty sure it's just Mango HUD percent command percent, but I'm gonna be sure. Yep. So we can just copy this. Go over here. Properties. Uh, launch options. Paste this. Bam. And now we should be able to load it back up. There we go. And there's our mango hood. Alright. Re enable this. So we have Mango Hood up, and a window capture. As you can see, our frame time graph is relatively smooth. Uh, the game looks great, and it's running great. And I usually like to come here to the first step. I'm going to turn the game audio down here in a second, too, just to uh, even this out a little bit. I don't want to drown out my voice or anything. 
just turn this down. Uh, usually right here, what I like to do, uh, we have some uh, stutteriness happening right now. This was not happening without OBS running, by the way. But um, it, it's still visually smooth to the eye compared to full screen capture. So I'll usually run through here. This is where the game would slow down in Windows. Doesn't do it here. Frame time is far more jittery thanks to the OBS capture. But this is still... I would say with OBS running, this is... The game feels just like it does in Windows. And without OBS, it feels superior to Windows. So we'll just do a run up to the castle. Showcase this. Also, the enemies uh, disappearing, which was an issue that I had on my other computer last time I tested this game in Linux, is not happening. The game looks absolutely spectacular, and I do not see that happening at all. Uh, before, what would basically happen was the horse would despawn at certain locations, and so would the enemies. Weirdly. Uh, but that's not happening now. The game's been patched and updated a couple times since release, and it's <laughs> it's fixed the bugs in Linux too. So I'm gonna take the long path around here and just do a nice little run up to the castle. Yeah, as you can see, even with OBS running, the frame time graph is not terrible. Definitely playable. You can get over it. I played this game in Windows 50 hours with terrible frame pacing. Uh, in a very inconsistent frame rate. So anybody can do it. Uh, but this is definitely smoother. And just incredible that it's working. Just incredible that this is working. Good content, though. I'm glad I was able to make this video and showcase this and Final Fantasy VII, specifically two games that, well, like I said, Final Fantasy VII doesn't have much documentation. Elden Ring is a big buggy mess on Windows. Uh, but both of them work great in Linux. Um, Elden Ring does have extensive testing in Linux, so I would say anybody would be safe to install this and probably have a great time with it in its current state. Final, Final Fantasy VII Remake, I don't know. It seems to be in good standing in Linux, but I'll have to play more of the game. Oh, well, we had one slowdown there. That did not happen last time I ran through here. Uh, so like I said, maybe it's just OBS is putting some extra stress on my CPU. I'm not sure, but overall, this is still way smoother. Uh, it is it is a little funny to notice the slowdowns are more prevalent. Yeah, see, this didn't happen at all earlier when I was not recording. At all. I was getting an average of like 40 FPS right here. So... Keep that in mind. If you're going to be streaming this game or re screen recording it in Linux, you may run into some of these issues. But without OBS open, it didn't happen, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But yeah, that's excellent. The game runs beautifully in Linux, uh, you know, minus OBS screen recording. Uh, and yeah, I would still say runs quite decently with OBS on. Uh, it just runs more like it would in Windows. Oh, see, and it, it smoothed out right there after we crossed over it, so, um, just keep that in mind when you're screen recording, but otherwise, you should be good to go, this game is great in Linux, and I just kind of run up here, I don't know, we'll go inside the castle real quick, um, or, no, you know what, we'll go to, oh, the map took a second to spawn in there, oh, lord, look at that frame rate, uh, we will go over here to right here, the converted tower. Why not? Just see what happens. I'm not even sure where I'm at. Do I remember coming here? Um, here we go. That yeah, game just looks and is running great. I'm, I'm super happy with it. Uh, I just got this computer, too, and I really can't stomach using Windows. I don't like the operating system. I have not in such a long time. I've not been comfortable using it. I've always preferred Linux. The biggest thing holding me back was just the handful of games that I couldn't play that I had spent money on. I just didn't want that value to be completely wasted because I was running something that I didn't have to run even if I wanted to run it. And 
Lynx is pretty much in a state now where you don't have to worry about that as much when it comes to single player content. And that is pretty much the only limitation that was holding me back. I don't I don't edit videos. I could get over not having Adobe Premiere or Photoshop. I'm, well, I, I would personally be content with GIMP even though I don't even know how to use Photoshop tools. But I would be content with those applications. Um, from what I have used in GIMP, I think it's a great application in Linux. Um, and I've used Kden Live as well as I think it's Pativi, OpenShot. All of those are functional video editors that work perfectly fine uh, for the type of thing that I would do. I understand it's not for everybody, but hey, right now Linux is serving its purpose quite well, and I'm just happy that this game and Final Fantasy VII Remake and Tunic are all running amazingly well. Quite impressive. Uh, so, I guess my closing notes is, you know, if you're not afraid to tinker a little bit and get your feet dirty, your hands dirty, then I have an NVIDIA Optimus laptop. I just downloaded the latest long-term support, at least Pop! OS with the NVIDIA driver, and it works flawlessly, you know? Give it a try. Definitely worth at least trying once if you've never done it. And I would say you are... You know, even if you uh, just put a separate, what I would honestly recommend people do if they wanted to test Linux would just be to buy like a small 240 gig SSD, something that's very affordable, like 30, 40 bucks. Buy one at uh, most stores now, like Walmart or Best Buy, or order it on Amazon, and just put it in your computer and install Linux to it. It'll be on a completely separate disk from Windows. You don't have to worry about breaking anything, and you can just give it a shot. And if you like it, you know, maybe you switch or you decide to dual boot on the same drive, you know. Uh, but it's really cool that you have those options available to you. And I'm happy to report that with very little tinkering in the Steam side of things and uh, the Epic Game thing, while being complicated, still manageable to figure out with some troubleshooting skills. This has been a complete success. I installed this, the NVIDIA ISO for the latest LTS of Pop! OS. Changed to the regular GNOME shell uh, from the Pop shell, and it is an absolute success. No screen tearing. My GPU driver's a little out of date, but hey, it's something we can fix later. Everything is working absolutely flawlessly. No compatibility issues with my Wi Fi driver. With my NVIDIA Optimus, it just works with my 3050 Ti. And like I said, I got the games working, man. I got them working. And it's an excellent feeling to see that and to know that we're headed in that direction full send. So, like I said, give it a try. And if you're already on Linux, I hope that this video provided a slight amount of educational content to show you how to maybe get these three games working if you were unaware of how to. Or maybe if you had the same issue with getting saved data uh, and using a heroic game launcher, my fix that I... Uh, got through reading blog posts and stuff should apply to other games also so you know give it a shot but regardless I hope that uh, this was like I said useful to somebody and uh, thank you for watching